A co-worker and friend, John, is Buddhist, and we work in an environment where co-workers are talking negatively of other co-workers for the sake of getting noticed how good they are by the higher-ups. They badmouth who, when, and where they can for the sake of their own personal gain, be it a promotion or to be in cahoots with the managerial staff. John does not participate in such activities due to his religious beliefs. As a friend, I feel it my duty to bring to attention and educate the higher-ups so John does not get overlooked. He is quiet and does his job, so it would be all too easy to overlook him. So I wanted to talk to you a little about John's religious beliefs, because I feel he gets overlooked for positions due to him not cutting anyone else down. Yeah, I've noticed he's the quiet type, and I haven't heard him say anything bad about anybody else before. And I don't think you ever will. He's someone who truly lives his beliefs. And for this reason, I want to share some of his beliefs with you so you can be more aware of him. I really think he would be a great candidate for the promotion coming up. So are you cool if I tell you a little about John's beliefs? Yeah, that'd be great. Okay, great. Do you know anything about Buddhism? Not really. I had no idea that he actually was a Buddhist. Okay. Well, I'll hit up some main points then to give you a rough idea about what Buddhists believe in practice. They believe in a nada which means no self. So nothing could exist without something else. I have a rainbow here as an example. The things that go into making up a rainbow. What can you tell me? Water. Light. Good. There's also the clouds that bring the rain. So without water, you can't have any rainbow. And without the light, you can't have any rainbow. So you need all three of these elements, the cloud, rain, and light, to make a rainbow. So you're telling me everything exists because of something else? Yes, you've got the idea. They also believe in reincarnation, and it doesn't have to be a human we are reborn as. They also believe in karma. Do you know what karma is? I've heard the word before, but I'm not really familiar with what it actually is. Well, to define karma... It's the moral law of cause and effect that determines the direction of rebirth. So in other words, you reap what you sow, or what goes around comes around. Deeds done in past lives determine present and future life. However, there is no fate, and you can, as Heath Ledger puts it in Night Knight's Tale, change your stars. So intentional action is what generates results. Now, by what I understand about Buddhism, everything ultimately stems back to reincarnation and karma because you want to have a good life until you reach what we'll talk about later nirvana you have to you're going to keep being reborn so again everything comes back to reincarnation and karma and that is why they believe and practice what they do they believe in what's called the four noble truths and what are the four noble truths great question They are, one, the first noble truth is life is dukkha, or suffering. Essentially, humans are not perfect, which leads to suffering of physical and emotional pain. The only constant in our world is change. Now, because there is no constant or permanence in our world, they do not believe in a soul, or Atman. Atman is the deepest self, or soul, and because nothing is permanent, there can be no soul. The origin of dukkha is attachment. The reasons for... That is the second noble truth. The reasons for suffering include craving and clinging to transient objects, ideas, and objects of our perception. The third noble truth is the cessation of dukkha is attainable. Basically, this means by removing the cause of suffering, you can attain dukkha. The cessation of dukkha. And the fourth noble truth is the path to the cessation of dukkha. The Eightfold Path, which I'll get to in a second, covers explanation of this noble truth. There's a quote I found online. A person should always strive towards increasing the welfare of not only his own, but of all living beings. This will help in cessation of suffering. I thought that one uh, went well with the fourth noble truth. 
So, to explain the Eightfold Path, we're going to start down the list. There's right view, right intention, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, right concentration. So Buddhists practice the Eightfold Path, but it's a gradual path to self-improvement that leads to the cessation of suffering. Now the goal is to reach Nirvana. Nirvana? The band? Uh, no. It's not a band or a person. More of a state of being, really. Nirvana is the release from suffering and rebirth that brings inner peace. It's very similar to Christianity's idea of what heaven will be like. Buddhists have the five precepts. Abstain from killing. Abstain from stealing. Abstain from sexual misconduct. Abstain from lying. And abstain from intoxicants. Ah, like the Ten Commandments. Well, kind of. Except the five precepts did not come from a god. They were discovered by the Buddha through meditations. In fact, the form of Buddhism that John practices, Theravada, does not believe in God. Wait, I always thought that Buddha was their god. Nope. Buddha is actually a title, so to say, that means enlightened one. The founder of Buddhism, Siddhartha Gautama, was indeed a mortal human. He meditated and received an awakening, or enlightenment. And that is the beginning of the Buddha. Alright. Well, thank you for your presentation. I'm sure it's helped me to understand John a lot better, and consider him for the promotion. Thank you.